Hey, so I'm traveling this week, which is the reason behind the worst mic, but on this I'm going for consistency over quality. I'd rather document my work with a poor mic than not document it at all. So let's get started. There are two main orders of business this week. The first was the client-side implementation of the database, which is now done. I now have the code to update the database with tiles and encounters in the game, and their ID numbers will all be saved client-side. Each event also has its own function called from the client when it occurs. The insertion can of course be turned off, and if it is, then the game will not send any events. To ensure that requests are sent in the right order, I modified my tween queuing system to both treat requests as tweens and not reset when the scene changes. The tween system in Sparkler Tiles does several important things. It started just for the character transform animations, but it's since expanded into a way to handle many types of asynchronous code and callbacks. A tween animation can run on its own, but most tweens are in channels, which are separate queues that all run in parallel. This makes it easy to, for example, enforce the order of animations and moves. First, the selector moves to the right tile, then the characters do their animations, then the effects get applied, control is returned to the players, and in parallel, on a different channel, the HP begins to drain. The web requests also get their own channel. This guarantees that, for example, a fight is inserted into the database before the things that happen in the fight. I had to make a few revisions to the database itself as well. There are some bugs to fix, the most notable of which had to do with unique IDs. I at first made my own way of having consecutive numeric IDs, but it wasn't compatible with fast incoming requests. Instead, I used SQLite's auto increment feature, which was much simpler, and I would have used it in the first place if I knew it existed. A good lesson to get from that is to check if someone's already made what you're making. I'm pretty bad at that one to be honest, because I really like doing things myself, but it's worth checking. Anyways, I also made some design changes to the database. First, I realized the times used field under the tile table told us the number of times players or enemies used the tile, which isn't super informative, so I separated it into times used by player and times used by enemy. I also had to rearrange some of the ways encounters were stored for better future compatibility. Lastly, I separated the win and lose variables from the restart and quit variables because it's possible to, say, quit a run after losing or restart a run after winning. I also updated the tiles in the game to add some new synergies, or I was going to when I realized I had already made a bunch of tiles. I, I simply hadn't tested them yet or put them into the regular lineup of tiles the players can counter. So let's talk about the synergies the game has. First, I have charge. Charge is a status condition that doesn't do anything on its own, but many tiles require charge in order to take effect. I call this consuming charge, and there are a lot of tiles in the game with that compatibility. The new area of synergies is weak and vulnerable. Weak makes your next attack do half damage, and vulnerable makes your next attack deal 150% damage. In this category, we have weaken and vulnerate, which apply one weak and one vulnerable to all enemies, respectively. Faint, which gives the user one vulnerable, but applies two vulnerable to all enemies. Gear Up, which gives the player 3 armor and which applies 2 weak to the active enemy, and Sneak Attack, which deals 10 damage to all vulnerable enemies, which ups the damage to 15. Sneak Attack had some particular bug fixes to make, but the process of fixing those bugs and ensuring these tiles worked made my tile system much more robust and easy to implement future features in. I talked before about the possibility of data-driven tiles, and though I may not end up making them fully data-driven and loaded from JSON files, I want there to be as little manual coding of each tile as possible, which I'm well on the way to doing. I also expanded the aforementioned charge synergies. The card Metabolize previously consumed a single charge and gave the player one energy, essentially making moving to the tile free, but it didn't do anything else. To fix this, I made it do four damage as well. I also added USB-C a rare tile that causes all allies to gain 2 charge, which is a straight upgrade from the charge tile. I also added two more basic attacks, Wide Slam, which does 3 damage to all enemies, and Heavy Hitter, which does 10 damage to a single enemy but immediately ends your turn when used. The last thing I did this week was make a music track. I wanted the soundtrack of the game to be very goofy, so I made a song with a real goofy beginning. Here's an excerpt. So, I don't know if that'll be a good battle theme necessarily, but I'll put it in the game somewhere. So, 
On to next steps. I'm reaching a place where the game development path opens up and I have a lot of ideas about directions to go with this prototype, but I'm not sure which path I want to follow first, though perhaps I should start with fixing export issues. I tried to export to an executable for the first time, and it didn't work right. Export issues are the most vile, repulsive things to debug, but I must brave the muddy waters if I am to succeed. After that, here's a shortened list of things I might want to do next. Adding shaders to the planets and backgrounds, making more encounters, adding more animations, a tile enchantment system, more overworld events, and multiple planets for the players to go to. All of these are planned, but which shall I do first? Only time will tell. Goodbye.